Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Copper bead. I guess with a number 10 hook, you should use a quarter or a one eighth bead. But I think this is smaller because that hook is small. It is a one eighth. It is a one eighth. <clears throat> and I will put it with the small. Jesus. Small end first rather than the big end. Because it's so big, I'll uh, build it up here a bit. Actually, Bob, you want to try sometime just for the hell of it. Turn that bead around. Oh, it goes right over it. It, it goes almost over, but it does But it goes over far enough, I have, that it sure cuts the, the tippet off in a hurry. <coughs> yeah, some, some of them the are pretty ones, sharp, and if you go over, that and that fish, so I very seldom do yeah. I put it that way, unless I'm tying some material on. If I'm tying material on, then you pretty well have to go with the big end. Yeah. <coughs> but uh, I make sure it doesn't go over very far, or it doesn't go over at all, really because I've had it cut off too many times. Well, why would you do it that way rather than putting the thread on first? Putting the bead up and then locking with the thread? Because this hook is fairly fine. It's a C49S. It's a lot finer hook than a 2457, a 10 And they say you should, you know, for the weight, for the size of the hook, they say go with a 1 8. Well, if, you, if I went to a smaller bead, but then you haven't got the weight to take it down, so I just do this and uh, it works. It's another step, yeah, but I'm never in that much of a hurry that I got to. Uh, and you could. Go over it. I don't. I cut it off and start over. But you don't have to. <clears throat> I just throw it. There we go. Plus the fact if you fill that up. The bead sits a little leveler instead of having the tilt. Mm -hmm. Fish are really going to worry about that. Well, I don't know. I never talked. I never talked to well, a fish to find out. They're looking from the bottom or the top. Right? <laughs> <laughs> For if they have one or two. Bob should know he's been under the water or not, hasn't he? Oh. <laughs> That's a low blow. That's an absolute low blow. True. But a good one. I gotta hey. give you that. It was a good I one. I just stayed in Cuba again, eh, Bob? <laughs> God, the music the I go through up here. Bait, Dennis? Oh. The abuse is just unbelievable. Bob, would you want to borrow this? Throw it at You guys have mercy on me. Just treat me nice. I'm going to tell my wife. If you guys don't treat me nice, I'm going to tell my wife on you, and then you're going to be in trouble. Now, that's not what she told us. <laughs> There's two. If, does anybody want these sheets? Oh, we can grab it. Oh, I guess you've been at them. Okay, but if you look at the material list, he uses the prismatic or the uh, pearl sheet, you know, that prismatic really makes a different color. It really makes a blue back on the fly. And normally I tie them all the time up with the 
um, flashable pearl. But I don't know, maybe guys making a mistake. I'm going to tie this one with with the prismatic, and you'll really good. I got some here that. Yeah, these are just with the uh, flashable. So I'll tie this one with the. And I always tie it with a point, just so I can grab it easier. And I go to the front here. Put it on. Grab it. Try to end up with it down the middle of the hook. Right to the tail. That's good. Then, piece of copper ribbing. It's too long. It always gets in the road. So I whack it off and I'll shove it right up into the bead just to get it there. And leave just a little bit. Behind. Next material is Arizona semi semi uh, synthetic. I really like it. It's nice. I don't like putting it on the thread. But it, uh, <coughs> I have problems with it, but that's all right. And a couple of times around behind here. 16. Not behind that, behind this. <laughs> behind the wire. And then can go in front. Yeah, the hen pheasant uh, tail. I don't know if you have to use that, but that's what it calls for. I'm sure if you had some some uh, rough grouse or something, it would probably work. Dave uh, Phelps like to use rabbit fur. Yeah, that probably would work too. Yeah. Build it up. One time I was out at, at uh, Dahlberg and they were taking back swimmers really well. They were really smacking them one day. And the next day, I could not catch a fish on a back swimmer. 
and I'd gone, I don't know if you guys have ever fished the, those that have. I went straight west from the dock, and I couldn't get a thing, and I'd been catching them there the, night, the day before, just like crazy. And I took off the back swimmer and put on the evil weevil, and the next three casts, I had three big fish on the evil weevil, and the rest of that day, I just did really well with the evil weevil. And that was the first time, probably, that I'd really used it a lot. Okay, bring this over, shell back. Ribbit. I don't know, I put five, maybe six <laughs> on this number ten. Don't want them too close. Now, <clears throat> I uh, bring the shell back, back over, <coughs> but I build a bit of a taper here. I've got lots of room anyway. If I can build a taper, <coughs> it makes the wings go on easier. The other thing I do that the original pattern there, I have changed, I only tie it with white wings. I found that the white wings were much, they're far more productive than the tan or brown wings. That's because they got UV ability. Kind of makes it more like a prince nymph, I guess, I don't know. I've done the same thing, Bob. Is that right? I use white. Yeah, yeah I, I just found that, you know, I tried it one day, they were hitting the white, and I took it off and put on another, the, the tan, yes. and nothing. Put the white back on, and away we went. Try those pink UV things that Dennis has got there. I'm sure those work. <laughs> And it's an easy fly to tie. That's another reason I like it. <laughs> it's not hard to tie. Did you get a matching pair to figure it out? No, I just take the two together, whatever, and, and stick them on. Yeah, you take them both from the same, same spot. and you put the curvature out. Now try and make sure you get them both the same length. Or as close as these old eyes will let me. Close. Yeah. yeah that looks. Then I fold these wings back. Fold them back before I cut it. And that locks them in. They never come out. And then I just go back and clip them off as close as I can. 
doesn't matter because you're going to cover them with the thorax anyway. But they don't move then. And the thorax is the natural peacock, where this is the late olive. Seems to be a good combination. And I make it fairly heavy in the thorax. case or couple in front kind of lock it in <laughs> now I usually leave just a little bit of a tag there kind of goes over the top of that bead a little bit I don't know if it needs to or not but it Drop of glue. <laughs> and that is the evil weevil. Oh, I thought it was evil Bob.